In this video, we're continuing in our odyssey of the commercial ammunition production of 223-556. We've already covered bulk brass processing. We've covered priming in a dedicated setup on the Apex 10 with Auto Drive and Primer Express. Now, we're gonna add powder. We're gonna feed bullets, seat those bullets, crimp the bullets, and that means complete ammunition. Hey guys, Gavin Gear and Kyle Shields here for UltimateReloader.com. Kyle, this has been a really cool project. Let's get straight into this. We've already done bulk processing. Yep. We've already done dedicated priming. Mm -hmm. uh, this setup kind of is the the ending sequence, right? This is. is is batting cleanup. It's finishing the process. Uh, quick review: We did the bulk processing. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the dies and the equipment that we used for that. What were, what were the key? kind of operations that were going on for the bulk processing. Yeah, so for bulk processing on, uh, we had case speed of station number one. Yep. Uh, station number two, we had our uh, decap. FW, so, FW, yep, FW yep. arms hold down die. Uh, three was swaging with a dynamic FW arms dynamic hold down die. Yep. Uh, four was primer block, and then the rest were empty, except, well, five was empty, six was trimming, mm -hmm. and then seven, eight, nine, ten were all empty gotcha. all the way up till the ejection yep. chute that we had going into a bucket at the very bottom. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about the case prep and lube situation as well, mm -hmm. right? Like part of the part of the advantage of doing a process like that is you can get your cases lubed sufficiently, mm -hmm. you know, because you've got sizing, right? Sizing is the key thing there. Uh, we're gonna make a little bit of a mess with trimming as well. So to tumble off the lube then provides you an opportunity for those cases to knock into each other, for that corn cob media to take the excess lube off, but then also some of that residual brass is gonna go away, right? So we essentially have the equivalent of, of new cases, right, coming into the priming process, mm -hmm. which means nothing is gonna stick to them the same way as when you've got lube and, and, and that kind of thing. And you caught me there, actually, I was wrong. So here we had a, the Lyman Pro die sizing, so full ink sizer die. Correct, so yeah, right. we did have that. Yeah. It's been a minute, like I've, I've uh, seems like I've changed this thing a lot over the past few mm -hmm. months, so there's a lot to keep track of. <laughs> and there's actually a sizer in the trimming station. There, that there is. It's kind of nice to decouple those a little bit where we get the perfect shoulder bump yep. with our dedicated resizer and then we can use the sizer and the trim station to keep the case from spinning right mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why they typically combine those is you got a lot of friction in there you can come down and trim um, really nice thing about the auto drive on the apex 10 is we can set that bottom speed and the mm -hmm. dwell and and all of those things to optimize for for trimming over forty one thousand cases yeah. processed and a lot. a lot of nuance with how much lube to use and what settings on the auto drive, but uh, you know we got through that. Okay, yeah. so why don't you walk us through the dedicated priming real quick. That was of course Primer Express. Yep, so well, we did Gen 2 first. Mm -hmm. So we removed the primer block, which now we have back on, we'll get to in a second. Yep. But we removed the primer block, put uh, Gen 2 on there, the Gen mm -hmm. 2 priming system, and used it with the standard primer yep. tube and follower and all that which stuff. Which is improvements based on the initial design of the Apex 10 mm -hmm. uh, after some customer feedback. And, and that took care of all the, any early issues that we encountered, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, it ran really well. And then after that, we popped on the Primer Express to the same mm -hmm. Gen 2 system. So it's pretty all bolt on. So you can kind of mm -hmm. bolt on your Gen 2, and then from there, if you want to update to the Primer Express, you can bolt that on as well. There wasn't yep. a whole lot of fiddling around and configuring it to get it to all work. You just make sure you're function checking everything, making sure you're dialing in yep. your primer depth and all that stuff. But it was all pretty easy to change over and even change back to the priming yep. block that we got here. And Primer Express really addresses the key pain points of priming. The key mm -hmm. pain points are you're gonna constantly need to be stabbing primers with that pickup tube, right? And then also stop the machine potentially to add more primers. Th those sorts of dynamics are gone because we can basically take 100 packs of primers and just pull away the cardboard. They fall into the funnel, they get uh, right sided up, mm -hmm. they get collated, they go down the track, they get fed into the machine, there's an inverted primer sensor. Like that is, that really enables you to crank through where you're only stopping for an unplanned stoppage or cleaning or maintenance, right? Right. Because you can also add powder while the machine is running. But, That's true. You know, you might want to stop it for that. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably so. You don't want to, you don't want to spill your powder. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 
and, and this mimics the commercial loading process, right? Yep. For these medium level ammunition production facilities, especially where they're using previously fired brass, mm -hmm. prep in one phase, priming in another phase, and then we get into uh, another dirty phase where you've got powder potentially spilling and that kind of thing. Now we're doing it without any case lube to mm -hmm. get things gummed up. Priming can be the most error prone. We've got all the sensors here yep. that can help us detect that and not run a whole bunch of cases with no primers or not catch a flip primer or you know whatever that happens to be. So now we're just focused on that final set of activities. Why don't you walk us through station by station what we've got here? Sure, so station number one, we've got our case feed. So mm -hmm. our prime cases from our Primer Express system that we did last time. And then basically two, three, four, five mm -hmm. are all empty. Well, the only thing on number five we do have is the primer orientation sensor, which is okay. really, it, it counts as a station, but it's, it's not really doing anything as the sure. station itself. So yeah. that's just going to make sure that we, I, I didn't miss any primers or empty cases that I accidentally yep. dumped in from last time from everything shifting and moving around, just, just to catch that in case mm -hmm. there isn't a primer there. and we're Or, gonna or if the primer is flipped, right? Exactly. Because so, you can tell the difference with the little plunger. Yep. 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 Yeah. And uh, you guys did the setup with John mm -hmm. Lieger, so on all these sensors that we'll, we'll get into. Dedicated but. videos on the sensors, and in the article, we'll link to those articles so that you can find all that information. That's, that's yep. how I set these up, honestly. Cool. It was really, really well done. Mm -hmm. Quick, quick, the information that I needed quickly to get this set up. So yeah, followed that. Um, and yeah, installed the primer block back on. So yep. we're using primer lock with the primer orientation sensor. Then after that, we got our powder charge. Mm -hmm. So for our loads, we're using the Berry 62 grains uh, here. Yep. So 62 grain full metal jackets. I just duplicated Guy's uh, practice load, his 223 practice yeah. load. Yeah, we have so. a number of stories involving this bullet and similar. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to check those out if you want the, kind of the backstory on the load and some of the performance data. Yeah, yeah. so the last time I think that you guys had used this powder measure was with pistol. So mm -hmm. I had to change out the, the drum to rifle. Yep, which so, we've got here. This yep. is the pistol That's version. That's the pistol yep. one. That's the small one. So cool. It, it took me a minute to figure it out. I wasn't familiar. This was a lot of this stuff is new to me again, mm -hmm. so it was quite an adventure. But it's still relatively easy once you wrap your head around how it works. Yeah. So yeah, changed it out to rifle. Got the, the charge dialed into twenty six point five grains mm -hmm. of powder of CFE two two three. Cool. So yeah, then after that, we're doing a powder check. So mm -hmm. we're using the digital powder check sensor. Same thing. Followed the video on that. Really easy. Mm -hmm. It acts as a visual powder check as well as the digital version. So stop the machine. Yep. Then after that, we got our Mr. Bullet Feeder, and mm -hmm. I had to do something a little unique here because I was finding that the return, mm -hmm. it wasn't pull, it wasn't gravity wasn't pulling itself back down. It basically, it wasn't allowing the bullet feed die to fall you back down. You kind of stick in the, the up, upward position. It, yeah. Exactly, and so I just did a Google search for on the online just to find if someone else has had this issue, and they have. So I came across some form where someone took a Forster die. In this case, we're using the Hornady uh, lock ring. Yep. So. You take a lock ring with a cross bolt through it and you find a spring. You can get them at your hardware store, your favorite hardware store, yep. and just attach it to the, the clip here nice. on the Mr. Bullet Feeder. And it works really, really well and solved all nice. the issues with the bullet feed. Yep. Um, There's always going to be something DIY. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. And little, it, little details. <laughs> it, at first, it baffled me and I kept adjusting the die down yep. and some other things and it just wasn't working. And, and keep in mind, we are still using mixed head stamp brass here. So mm -hmm. this is a little tricky compared to using the same head stamp. Mm -hmm. You know, with the same head stamp, you could get things locked in and figured out. But this, it's there's a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. So so after we got bullet feed, we've got our bullet seating die. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we've got bullet sense checking to see if a bullet is not upside down or even present at all. Nice. Especially since I was having some yep. finicky issues with the bullet feed there for a minute. And this is from the Pro Dye set. Exactly. Yep. The yep. Lyman Pro Dye. And then same Lyman Pro Taper Crimp Micrometer. I love dye. the micrometer adjustability on that. That's pretty pretty unique. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. So that's the full setup. After that, it checks the full completed cartridge into our bin. And I've already done some here for yep. my testing, but... Looks okay. really good. As far as bullet seating depth, we're just seating to the cannulor. Yeah. So. And within the 2.260 envelope. Yep. Just took a case gauge and checked it. Yep. Also double checked it with calipers and everything was nice. good to go. Great setup. Thank Next, you. let's load some ammo. All right. Let's roll. Let's do it. So we're starting out fairly slow. Yep, 1,000 rounds per hour. 
So from our priming setup, I did change some of the settings on the setup here for dwell times and things like that. So our index speed is a little slower. Our top dwell is one, our bottom dwell is five. And that's that's just, for, for powder drop? Yep, that's yeah. gonna help with our powder drop, keep everything consistent, keep powder from spilling, things like that. Nice. Um, and then for sensors, you'll see that I have all of our sensors that we talked about turned mm -hmm. on. So that's pretty much it. So this is kind of a validate that we're gonna be doing good at a slower speed. Yes. And uh, maybe let's let a few more run and then we'll see where we go from there. Sounds good. So we've done our initial validation. Let's go from 1,000 to 1,500. What do you think? Let's do it. 50% more throughput? Yeah. Oh yeah. And luckily our dwell speeds will it will scale up, you know, sure. and keep it all, Yep. keep our powder from spilling, everything like that. So that's kind of nice, that does all that for mm -hmm. you. Looks like 1500 is doing well. Why don't we go up to 2000? Let's do it, here we go. Which I think is a good target speed. Yeah, especially with bottleneck cases like mm -hmm. this. Two thousand rounds per hour is still quite a lot. Yeah. So. Looks like our ammo bin is totally full. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome, let's stop it. Let's do it. Nice work. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was quite a project. Great work taking us from brass processing, latest and greatest on the Apex 10, Primer Express, separate priming, and now the kind of conclusion of the reloading process. Mm -hmm. I know. I've learned a lot through the process. It was great to have nice. Michael Halleck from Vantage Research to help uh, guide us on, you know, what, what is a realistic bulk bulk ammunition production kind of layout and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, Want to remind everybody that we have separate videos on the Apex 10 in manual form, um, all of the individual sensors, some maintenance tips, all of the the content that we did with John Vlieger, who's attack at Mark Seven, and. Uh, We've got a bucket full of ammo. We can definitely continue going here, which is absolutely awesome. So great work definitely. on all this. Thank you. Yeah, it's been <laughs> fun. A lot of learning experience for me as well. And mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome to see how capable these machines are, really. It's, and they're fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. And we have more plans. We got some oh, yeah. other kind of related content that we'll be announcing here soon uh, that's in a different firearms platform, if you can connect the dots there. So. Uh, yeah, again, this has been fun. Uh, what we'd like to know from you is what do you think about this breakdown that we did of the bulk processing, the priming that was a dedicated step, the remainder of the reloading process here. Mm -hmm. Are you running an Apex 10? Are you running an auto drive from Mark 7 even on another type of machine? Share us your experiences and if you have a different kind of setup for mega ammunition production, kind of how you've structured things and you know, any other anecdotes that you want to share. Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion down in the comments section. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. Thanks again for watching.